Imagine you've been in a situation there and then you got guys leaving who therefore aren't available to play, but you're in that sort of transition period. Is that difficult? Is it awkward or emotional time yeah it's emotional when you're you're losing guys who are part of uh your success or or your locker room or you know um uh, kind of guys that lean that a guy that people lean on emotionally at times uh so yeah it can be hard but it can also be exciting as far as having guys coming in who can help you and help you play well um, and help you get to where you want to go. So, um, yeah, there's both. There's the uh, emotional and physical part of guys actually leaving, but then the uh, excitement about the guys coming coming to you. Eric is out. Eric is out. Same stars? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Just in terms of... I don't want to say experiment, but gathering data on playing Christian and healthy together. Yeah. Do you want to see more time with them with two big guys as you did against Cleveland, as opposed to how does it work against San Antonio or the New Orleans lineup the other day? Yeah, probably a little bit of both. You know, it's, uh, it, it's, in order for it to work, it has to kind of work against everybody, right? Like you can't have it just work against certain. Um, groupings of, of uh, opponents um, for it to be something that you can kind of lean on as the season goes along, regardless of what the, the opponents are doing. So, yeah, uh, we, would, we would like to see it against smaller fours, bigger fours, um, and then evaluate whether it's something that uh, we can go forward with or not. We'll take a few from Zoom. Um, Jackson Gatlin. Hey, Stephen. Hey. Um, what attributes do you feel are most important for a guard or a lead guard to have at the NBA level to be uh, a solid playmaker? And are you starting to see that growth and some of those attributes flourish in Jalen Green recently? Wow. <laughs> There's a lot to, to being a... Uh productive guard in the NBA there is putting pressure on the defense and there's a lot of different ways you can do that you can do that with your shooting you can do that with your ball handling you can do that um, with pick and roll where you are attacking bigs if you can do anything we're past shooting but um, if you there's things that you can do to draw the second defender um, then you can distort defenses you can uh, make plays for others. The one, the few things that Jalen has done very well is get the ball up the floor quickly and beat defenders down the floor, not letting them get set. Uh, he's also, his shot quality has been very good uh, as far as uh, getting to the rim or shooting threes. Uh, guys have been creating for him and he's been getting open looks. He's also doing a better job of reading uh, the unders because teams are going under some of his dribble handoffs or pin downs and he's starting to read those and either shoot or get to the next action. So, um, yeah, I, I'm pleased with this progress as far as kind of like understanding what's going on on the court, reading the defense, which is a huge part of it. And then, you know, using the experience for, of every game to get a little bit better. Mark Berman. Steven, a couple things. Do you have any kind of a timeline on Eric right now, or is it just uh, game by game? Yeah, it's just day to day. It's just day to day. Is there anything you can share on Daniel at all? Oh, Daniel um, Tice? Tice? Yeah. Uh, no, it's just personal reasons. Okay, thank you. Last one, Adam Stolen. Steven, you talked yesterday about floor positioning with Alpi and Christian when they're on the floor together. I'm wondering, do you feel like you can post up one of those two when they are on the floor together? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, there's one in the post, then the other one has to be in a spot where they can draw some attention. So whether it's down in the dunker, which we don't use very much as a group, but this season we have a little, used it a little bit more because we have uh, post-up threats. 
Uh, Christian has been better in the post than he was earlier in the season because he's been attacking smaller defenders. And then Alpi obviously um, has shown that he can play in the post. There's other, there's also having them up on the floor so they can be a screener. So you can use them to, as the ball is in the post, screen for a cutter, screen for a shooter, that sort of thing where they can uh, kind of play off each other. But yeah, there, there's definitely... If one's in the post, there's definitely places where you can put the other one. Thanks, Coach. Yep.